What is up everybody? Welcome back to 9 to 5 Gamers and today we have another top 10 video which is going to be top 10 games that got me into the hobby. So I know these games are going to be different for everybody depending when you got into the hobby but coming into the hobby one of the first things you do is you just start watching content about it in YouTube and trying to figure out hey what are the best games to play now that I'm just starting my collection and so that's kind of what I did and it was a lot of games that I saw that I was like you know what these are really cool and a lot of the games I got at Target and stuff like that but as, as I was making this list it just brought back all of these fond memories of like all the games that made me love board gaming and so I'm going to go ahead and get into my top 10 list and these are ranked in order of which ones I would want to play now but I'll explain that as I go along but without further ado let's get into it but before we do please subscribe to the channel guys I need to hit, hit my goal this year I'm hoping to get to 20,000 subscribers we're already at 10,800 and so I want that to continue to climb so please it goes a long way if you guys could just hit that subscribe button it would be awesome and if you really really want to support the channel you can go to ko-fi.com or click on the memberships here and you can give a membership ko-fi gives me the most money more than YouTube does or patreon so I would love it if you can go to ko-fi and pick up a membership there but if you can't do it there if you want to just do it on YouTube I'm okay with that as well but anyways without further ado let's get into this list so number one is a game called Hidden Leaders. Hidden Leaders is the actual first Kickstarter that I backed. I only had a few games and I had heard about Kickstarter and I saw this game and it just looked really cool. So I was like, let me go ahead and grab it. And uh, I got it the next year after that. So before then I was like building up my collection, but it was my first Kickstarter and it was amazing. I really like Hidden Leaders. They came out with an expansion for it recently and the game company that created it is also creating a couple of other games that were really interesting. One was like a social deduction game that looked really interesting as well well so hidden leaders fantastic push and pull game it's just like you play cards to do a tug of war between two factions that are on the board which is the green and the red faction but if you can pull them into the blue zone or the the undead zone those are the two zones that you can pull them into and depending who your faction leader is depends on which way you want that tug of war to kind of pull them and so it's a really really fun game you just play cards that interact with other people's cards and you pull this these markers towards your faction which is really really fun uh, and that is hidden leaders my next game on my list is a game called boss monster which just had a kickstarter recently and they are doing a basically a big box and they're calling it super box monster but they add it's uh, like a play mat and some other things that are uh, new mechanics to the game that make the game play a little bit better. Um, honestly, everything that they added to the game is going to make this game just phenomenal, including some like worker placement stuff where you can go and do different things. But this game is essentially like a Super Mario where it but backwards instead of a hero going through a dungeon to beat the boss at the end, you are the boss building a dungeon to kill the heroes. And so little heroes will go through your dungeon and they'll hit traps along the way and it'll do damage. And so as long, if they take enough damage going through each room of your dungeon, they'll die before they get to you. And if they get to you, they do damage. And if you take too much damage, you lose the game. Um, but it's really, really fun. I've really enjoyed this game with my wife. We've played it so much. I've been trying to get in contact with Brotherwise because I'm like, Brotherwise, listen, I love Boss Monster. Like it is literally one of my favorite games of all time. With me and my wife, we, we still play it to this day. And it's been in my collection for a very long time. Um, and I want to collaborate with them and, and, and check out all the stuff that they have. So I have all of the expansions for Boss Monster. I have Boss Monster 1, 2, and 3, and uh, all of the mini expansions that came with it. Such a fun game, man. If you find a copy of this, the original number one is worth purchasing. Number eight on my list is a game called Skull King. And this was like my first trick-taking game, even though I think I'd played like spades in the past. But Skull King was my first trick-taking game. And I love the mechanic of like betting and bidding on how many hands you're going to win, how many tricks you'll win. And also the little addition of the yo-ho-ho, -ho, where you bang on the table and go yo-ho-ho. -ho, and then you put out how many you bid and the person's writing down who bid what just to keep them accountable skull king is just really fun trick taking game where you score points if you get the right amount of bids you're gonna get or if you bid that you're gonna get zero you have to lose every single hand and that can be tricky in and of itself but it can score you a lot of points towards the end of the game skull king's fantastic you guys should check that one out you can get that at target and it comes with a recipe for a pie. I say that every single time that I mentioned Skull King in any kind of list that I do because it would just struck me as odd that there was a, a whole pie recipe inside of there. But Skull King is fantastic. Really love this trick taking game. As far as like my first like worker placement game that I had ever played, it was Everdell. Everdell was this cool 
tableau building, worker placement where you get resources. And a friend of mine brought it over the house to play. And I was like, I have to get my hands on this, this game. I really liked it. And it was really fun. And I played it a ton. Everdell is so good. I got to play it with my wife. She didn't enjoy it as much, which is why it ended up overall leaving my collection. But trust me, if my wife loved this game, it would have stayed in my collection forever because I just, Everdell was so much fun. It's so good. A lot of expansions, a lot of cool stuff that they added to this game. But as far as like a basic worker placement game, very simple. Like it didn't feel like it was overly complicated and it was very easy for me to get the hang of it. And I really loved it as one of my first worker placements ever. Um, this was a really great experience. So Everdell, recommend it to anybody who who has never played it. My next game is actually the game that kind of got me through the whole entire pandemic. I'd say this is like my original like board game and it was the board game that like really stuck with me for a very long time and that's Marvel Champions the card game. I have literally everything that's ever come out for the game up until the X-Men. I think I got like maybe two or three X-Men. I got the X-Men the first X-Men expansion and I think I got the Wolverine pack and I forgot which other one but that was pretty much it. Then after that it was just so bloated with stuff. I was like you know what I'm good but I still think that anybody who wanted to get into this you could get the core box and you could play that a ton and then just buy heroes after that. The, the one thing that I think gives the game longevity is more villains than heroes, but they keep coming out with more heroes and more heroes and more heroes. And for me, all I want is villains. Like, I just want more villains to play against because it, it, it just, it's like I have enough heroes and I have enough cards to worry about the whole amount of cards that are in there. It's a living card game. So yeah, it was tough, but eventually I just kind of stopped playing it, but it was still one of my favorite games literally for like two, three years straight. This channel kind of started with that. Like when I started making board game content, I started with like Marvel champion stuff. And if you go back far, far, far enough, you can, you can still see it, but it's old stuff. So don't even think about looking at any of it but but marvel champions the card game amazing living card game i thought it was super fun if you're not into marvel totally check out arkham horror which was the arc basically it's like the what is that like cthulhu version of it which is really fun that's marvel champions that's my number six my number five is a game called one night ultimate werewolf social deduction game so much fun to play with people man the amount of times that you know, people would just look at you and, you know, I've got that one friend of mine who literally will just do social reads all the time and he'll just look at every single person and be like, let me tell y'all something. They're the werewolf. Pick them and they would just get out of the game. But it was fun. But werewolf is fun just because, like, if I could show you my copy of werewolf, like, the pieces are so worn out because of how much I've played this at parties and get-togethers. It's just a fun social deduction game. Everybody closes their eyes and then the werewolves will kill somebody and then you have to try to figure out the next morning who the werewolf is and people are dying off people have powers that let them kind of know who's who it's a really really fun social deduction game better than werewolf is definitely blood on the clock tower but i didn't get that till much later but that's a lot more like like you really got to prepare for that one night you can whip it out and play in like five minutes it's like super fast super simple great social deduction game if you're looking for more of an upgraded experience you would go with blood on the clock tower next up is my first like area control game that i had ever played and that's katan katan is great i still play katan to this day katan is a game that i use to introduce people into the concept of area control so a lot of people will ask questions like hey how do you get your friends to play board games like i have friends but you know i don't i don't know if they will ever play board Board games like I do, I think people are more likely to play games than collect them. I think finding people to play games is really not that tough. Um, if you, you know, get, in, you know, you have a lot of connections with people like, like I do, I, you know, I go to church, so I have a ton of friends at church and a lot of my church friends will come over the house and just hang out and we'll eat dinner. And then after dinner, I'll be like, anybody want to play like a board game or something and just hang out. And Catan was one of those games that people would never play something like Scythe or anything like that. But Catan is such a pro an approachable look at and very easy too and the thing that i like about katan is that it is half strategy but also some luck like luck is so important in games like there's some people who like only strategy and that's fine but getting people to play games like that is very difficult unless you know that they know how to do strategy stuff but there has to be a little element of luck there and that's okay with me you know i'm okay with losing every now and then but at katan i do i do relatively well but at the same time i've lost a lot with friends of mine and they love Catan. It's just so much fun. I just play base and there's a lot of great expansions I'm sure for it, but base game is just so pure and so perfect. I love base Catan. It's fantastic. That's my number four. My number three is Ticket to Ride. The Ticket to Ride that I have currently is Ticket to Ride Europe, but originally it was just the regular base game of Ticket to Ride. And man, how simple of a game, how easy to play strategy 
but also luck. I love that about it. But it was like one of those gateway games. Like this is just, this got me so hooked into the hobby because I just absolutely loved playing Catan. And I'm sure for a lot of people that have played Catan, you know, a thousand times, you're probably like, I'm so done with Catan. I'm, I'm already bored of it. I get that. I actually sold my original Catan, but I ended up finding the 15th anniversary Europe edition for like $50. So I picked that up, but it's so good, man. Like I've been recently replaying it a lot with friends and so many people are like i love this game man this game was so good like what is this called the ticket to ride where can i find this and it's like bro you can find this anywhere it's so easy to find and people just love it they love the experience and ticket to ride is a fantastic game if you never played ticket to ride you just have like a big map and there's a bunch of little paths and you get these little destination cards and it'll have like a route that you have to build with little train pieces and the way you put them on the board is by having the color of the route and having that many train cars in your hand. So there might be a route that has three yellow cars. So if I can pick up three yellow cards with yellow trains, then I can give those in and then put three of my trains out and claim that route. I mean, it's just really fun crossing over and blocking people off. There's a little bit of a competitiveness to it that's really fun. Uh, I love Ticket to Ride. My number two game is my first like adventure dungeon crawler. It's more adventure than it is dungeon crawler, um, but it is definitely a dungeon crawl, I think. And that's Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. It was app integrated, which for me at the very beginning when I was learning to play board games, I was like, dude, this board game has an app in it and there's a lot of people who hate that so if you hate that don't buy lord of the rings you can't play it without it but lord of the rings journeys in middle earth was such a cool system you are basically on an adventure just trying to find your way through the levels the 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 levels are all built out of these like hexagonal grid pieces and then so the the app shows you where to place them so you have a physical board out and so you're moving from place to place and when you do you can go onto the app and click on you know interaction tokens and things like that in the game you, you can track the enemy's health bars and things like that and you attack enemies and stuff like that really really fun man me and my wife are like maybe like three-fourths of the way through the camp like we're right at the edge and we've been waiting for some free time because it's been so busy lately to actually get this to the table and just leave it on the table and play it and finish it off and we've got three expansions or two expansions that I got which I I've been looking forward to playing and I want to get those played. Um, but yeah, we love Lord of the Rings, me and my wife both. And uh, the card system is fun too because you have like a little deck of cards and those cards have either no symbol. They'll have like a, a symbol which represents like a hit. They'll have a leaf symbol which means you can spend these tokens to convert them to hits. Or you'll have blank cards which don't have anything on them but they have like abilities. But the way the game works is that you will attack and it's like, well, I'm attacking uh, this enemy and because I'm, you know, a battle axe wielder, I'm flipping four cards because it goes off my power. I flip four cards and then I count how many hit icons I get. And if I get two hits, then that's how much damage I have. Those are how many hits I have to spend on damage. And then if you get misses, then you miss your attack. And it's just really cool because you can build your deck with new cards in between matches and those new cards have hit icons on them so it makes it more easy for you to actually score hits and things like that and it's really really fun i think the system works really well it's like dice but it feels like you have a little bit more control over it and some of the cards have abilities to help you mitigate that even more but that was lord of the rings my favorite adventure game that was what got me into the hobby i love it still play it to this day and last but not least my first complex game which was my first uve rosenberg game which was lahav i watched a video from dice tower it was Tom Vassell and Tom Vassell said he loved Lahav and he just ta could not stop talking about how great it was and he did a whole video dedicated on this and I was like I gotta play this game man there's no way that this game is that good and I bought a copy of it it was my first Uwe game which I think that everybody should have an Uwe Rosenberg game I'm not saying it's the best game it's just the game that I personally loved first playing, and it was a, a lot more complex than any of the other games that I had played. Worker placement, but it's got this mechanic where this boat that's moving down the, the harbor and you're trying to get resources. You can buy buildings. Those buildings can be, you have like a little worker placement that you can go and put your worker on and use your own buildings for free. But if other people use your buildings, you charge them money for using them. And man, there was so many cool things to this. I love Lahav. Still to this day, I love it and I will play it. it. It took like maybe like two or three hours to play like my first gameplay of it. But the game is fantastic. I absolutely love Lahav and uh, I will continue to play it to this day because it's my favorite uh, Uwe Rosenberg game. And there's a lot more that I have to play. I still need to play probably regarded as the best one 
which is Feast for Odin. I know a lot of people love that game and say it's the best one out of all the games he's created. Still haven't played it, need to learn to play it, but I'm sure that would be up there. But it's not what got me into the hobby. Le Havre is what really got me and kept me in the hobby. So these are just games that I was playing at that time that I was like, man, I really want to I want to go deeper into this hobby and down this rabbit hole. So love these games. Let me know in the comments. Do you like these games? What are some of the games that got you into the hobby? I'm super, super, super interested in knowing that. But without further ado, that is it, man. Don't forget to like, comment, and please subscribe to this video, man. Subscribe to this, this channel. We want to get all the way up to 20,000. And I know you guys are going to be able to do that. We are four months in, but hey, we still got what? eight more months left let's let's make this the, the the best eight months and let's get these subs up anyway thank you guys for tuning in don't forget comment on the video let me know what your favorite games are that got you into the hobby they don't have to be gateway they can be complicated doesn't matter whatever got you into the hobby anyway take care peace out see you guys later